So, um, I'm choosing to evaluate the wing in rugby, which is a number 14. So, one strength is accuracy, and this is due to having a good motor programme for passing. And this comes from um, learning passing through master practice, which is where you continually pass without any rest intervals, and this makes the skill grooved and habitual. Um, this is also strength because by being able to pass, it means that there's less drop balls, um, less um, knock-ons, so you retain possession and have an um, increased chance of scoring. Another strength is rucking, and this is due to having a good ATP PC system, which is the system used for explosive um, short duration activities such as rucking, and this allows you to compete for possession or maintain possession, again, increasing your chance of scoring. Um, she also did demi passes very well, which was a, um, created a psychological refractory period in a defender's brain, which is the delay in the defender's brain due to having to complete stimulus one before f um, attending to stimulus two. And this is due to single channel hypothesis, which is where you can only the brain can only process one stimulus at a time. Um, they also work to pivot defence with the opposite wing, and that's where they shadow the direction of the ball a little bit behind the defensive line in order to cover any breakaway tries. Um, this is due to good team cohesion, so this can come from setting team goals, um, um, having team roles, team bonding activities such as um, paintballing. She had more flexible, uh, she was had good flexibility in her joints and this was because um, impact sports increased the secretion of synovial fluid in the joint, making the joint more flexible. Um, she also had more flexibility um, because she did PNF training, which is where you take the um, you contract the muscle to the point of resistance. Isometric contraction occurs against a coach or um, a wall. You then relax the muscle, and then you contract it again past the point of resistance, and it increases the flexibility. Um, being more flexible reduces the chances of injury, so she can keep playing for longer, and substitutes won't be used. Um, she also has very good speed which is essential for a wing, so she can run around the defence. Um, this is due to having predominantly t fast twitch type 2B fibres, which have a high force production, fast speed of contraction, and um, a high anaerobic capacity. One weakness is tackling, and this is because she had a high centre of mass outside the centre line of the body, um, and a low base of support. This, um, all these together mean that she's unstable in the tackle, so it meant that the opposition could hand her off and she would um, go to the floor. So that meant that there would be reduced numbers on the team and holes could um, be formed in the defensive line. Um, drop kicks were also a weakness, and this is due to a number of factors. One being the poor psychomotor ability for multi-limb coordination, and the second being... Um, due to schema theory, so because she doesn't participate in any other um, kicking sports, it means that she doesn't gain keen aesthesis of what a successful kick should feel like, so she can't replace these schemas in her long-term memory with the correct schemas, so her drop kicks will be persistently failing. Um, another um, weakness is power, and this is due to having a lack of strength in her, her shoulder region, so that could be the deltoids, the rotator cuff muscles, um, the trapezius pectorals. Um, this can be improved by plyometric training and this is where you take the muscles from the eccentric phase to the concentric phase and it includes, it, um, includes bounding activities. Um, she also had, she was also not very good at communication so she often got into good positions but didn't call so teammates didn't know where she was on the pitch. Um, this could be due to social loafing which is where um, the performer feels decreased responsibility for their actions, so they put in a lack of effort. Um, this could also be due to learned helplessness, which is the belief that failure is inevitable. So she may feel that she doesn't want to be passed to because she's um, she won't catch the ball or she's in the wrong position. To combat social loafing, um, the coach can praise non-social loafing behaviour, and this stimulates the S um, this. Um, causes the SR bond to strengthen in the direction of keeping um, to keep on achieving the praise from the coach. Um, for cardiovascular fitness, um, this was a weakness partly due to having fast twitch type 2B fibres and not having as many fast twitch type 1A which have a high aerobic capacity and have more mitochondrial capillaries which are essential for 
um, a fish and gases exchange. To improve the cardiovascular endurance, she could do either interval fartlek or continuous training. So interval is where you do activity and dispersive rest periods. Fartlek is where you, it's speed play across different natural terrains and continuous is um, continuous low density activities such as jogging. Um, this can increase this can cause sorry hypertrophy of the heart, which can increase stroke volume and cardiac output and um, will reduce her resting heart rate. Um, her last weakness is um, quite often the team, um, they lacked support runners and she didn't support when there was a breakaway try. This could be due to poor links with the golden triangle, so poor media coverage means that there's a lack of role models, so social reinforcement of correct behaviour such as support running or um, other behaviours aren't reinforced because there's no imitation occurs from a lack of role models in women's rugby. Um, the skill which I've outlined, which I uh, look to improve, is tackling, um, because it's a key part of the game, whether you're a defence or attacker. Um, preparation for a tackle will include watching the opposition's hit, because that will tell you the direction that they're travelling in. It also getting into a low body position known as the tower of power and this is a squat position with your hips over your feet which are shoulder width apart having a really really strong core being very low so you get a low center of mass so you're more stable the execution will involve hitting with the shoulder so um, the muscles involved with that are the rotator cuff muscles the deltoids latissimus dorsi um, it's also a ball and socket joint, which is the most stable joint, um, as it has the most ligaments around it. It's also a synovial joint. Um, once you've hit with your shoulder, you then have to sort of lift upwards, um, and you have to wrap around with your arms. The muscles predominant for, um, that cause that movement are your triceps breaker and your biceps breaker. Um, the follow through should contain a leg drive. This would involve the contraction, um, contraction of the rectus femoris, which are your, which are at the front of your leg, and they cause extension of the leg, and also the contraction of your bicep femoris, which are at the back um, of your leg, which cause um, flexion of the knee joint, which again is a synovial hinge joint. The recovery should include. Um, releasing the player on the floor in order to prevent a penalty because um, for not rolling away. Training should be carried out for four to six weeks with an improvement of 10%. Guidance methods will include manual guidance, which is where it's the physical manipulation of the performer's body into the correct position in order to complete a tackle. Um, an advantage of this is um, it allows skills that could be dangerous it allows the safety to be improved so for example um, a rugby tackle can put a lot of impact through your neck whereas if they know the correct position they're less likely to suffer with a neck injury however a disadvantage is they can become over reliant on um, the coach or um, equipment and this can lead to false kinesthesis also visual guidance will be used which is where the coach gives a demonstration of the correct way a tackle should be carried out this is an advantage because for cognitive performers it allows them to create a mental image. However, it's a disadvantage because if the incorrect skill um, becomes embedded, then there's no way of them correcting it. She's in the cognitive stage of learning, which means that she uses mental image, um, images to, of how the skill should be um, performed. It's also a, the trial and error phase and it has the lowest level of fluency. Um, drill one should be isolated and unopposed and this is where you use a person and a tackle pad and um, the person has to hit the tackle pad at an assigned target with their shoulder lift up um, again follow through with a leg drive um, the walking back to the cone which they began on allows distributed practice so feedback can be given extrinsically by the coach um, punishing them, praising them, telling them where they could improve the tackle, or intrinsically, which is where they gain a kinesthesis of the tack of what uh, how the tackle should be completed to know if it's been successful or not. 
Drill two is when you change the pack tackle pad for a person. Um, this is progression because it um, allows some resistance to be formed. For further progression, the tackler should um, use the clock face analogy. So they get to tackle from different directions, which makes it more game realistic. As further progression, they should move on to a sevens game, however, um, with full rules applying, sorry, but they can only tackle the person who is the same number as them, so you gain confidence of tackling that kind of person. So uh, increasing confidence can in, um, promote mastery orientation, which is the belief of a successful result. Drill three, um, will then be a full game with all rules apply. Um, the drill should be, should be based around smart targets, so these should be specific, so obviously using the tackle pad, using correct rugby terminology, correct rugby techniques, for example. They should be measurable, so the way you would measure if a tackle is effective is if they've effectively um, tackled the player to the floor. They should be achievable, so for example, saying a 10% improvement is more achievable than a 15% improvement. They should be realistic, so making it realistic is by starting off easier, so for example with a tackle pad, rather than starting in a full game situation. And time bound, so four to six weeks allows the performer to aim towards a goal. Um, as a pre-test, you would go into a, uh, go to a match and you would tally up the number of successful tackles, so that's how many tackles the performer makes to the floor. You would then, after the four to six weeks training has been complete you would then go to a game and you would do a post test tally which is where you would tally up the number of successful ta um, tackles and you would look for the 10% improvement which would tell you whether the training has been successful or unsuccessful. Um, in terms of skill um, you would use Whiting's model, information processing model during um, a game so for example catching a rugby ball you would um, get the input from display, so that's seeing the rugby ball coming at you. Um, you would then use your sensory mechanisms, which is your eyes detecting the ball coming towards you. You would then use your perceptual mechanisms, which is, uh, includes the DCR process, which is detection um, of the ball coming at you. Comparison, which is where you compare it to information stored in your long-term memory. And recognition, and if this... Um, response is recognised, then the skill is complete. If it isn't, then adap um, adaption has to be made. You then go on to your translatory mechanisms, which um, is where you make the most appropriate decisions, so for example, to catch the ball. And the effector mechanism is then responsible for sending syncodores from your brain to your hands in order to catch the ball. Your muscular system then contracts, so for example your biceps break or contract which cause flexion of the arms to bring it up towards your chest as a target. Um, the output is knowing whether there's been a successful result, so for example if you've caught the ball. And lastly feedback, either intrinsic or extrinsic, will allow you to know if the result has been successful or not. There are many different types of skills used in rugby, so for example there's gross skills which is where large muscle groups are used. So, for example, um, simultaneously running and catching uses legs, core, and arms. There's also um, it's also predominantly open skills, which are affected by the environment. So, for example, a pass depends on where your players are on the pitch. Um, there's also complex skills because um, a lot of decision making needs to be made, and there's a high perceptual load. In terms of sociocultural. Um, for women's rugby, there's a very, very small participation pyramid. So in the foundation level, which is the bottom level, which includes um, your first introduction to sport, introduction into, female is into women's rugby is very, very small. So that means that the elite, which is at the top, which is your national and international athletes, that means that that is going to be very, very small. So there's... Um, as I said before, there's not many role models, not much funding because UK sport don't distribute the national lottery because there's not as many medal chances and that's what they're um, primarily concerned with. Also, in the um, participation section of the pyramid, um, a lack of sports clubs um, that promote women's rugby um, means that there's less participation. So, for example, unless there's links with a Premier League club like Worcester Warriors, there's 
probably not going to be much girls rugby clubs. Um, there could also be a lack of opportunity. So, for example, um, it can often be expensive um, club fees and expensive equipment. So, for example, rugby studs, gum shields, um, tackle pads, they can all add up and it can be quite expensive, so reduced participation. Um, regular participation in rugby can also reduce the risk of osteoporosis and this is where the bones become porous and less dense so it increases the risk of fractures. Um, varied lines of pressure on the bones um, lead to the increase of calcium deposits which increases peak bone density to combat osteoporosis. Um, you also get weight management um, because um, participating in regular rugby can burn fat so there's less strain through synovial joints such as the knee joint, the hip joint which are used regularly and this can also improve esteem because you get a better body image which means that you're more confident and more likely to continue participating. Um, 19th century boys school are responsible for the creation of rugby so um, when um, when the boys were at school, they played lots of different recreational activities. Some involved kicking, some involved um, handling games. So, for example, in rugby school, William Webb Ellis took the original kicking game of football and handled the ball. And when the boys went up to the um, public schools, national governing bodies needed to be formed in order to consolidate the different rules. So that's where the creation of the RFU um, came from. Um, my performer could be a need to avoid failure um, performer, so some characteristics of this is that they show avoidance behaviour, they don't take risks on the pitch, they're um, very safe players, um, they also aren't very competitive, so it's not all about the winning. Um, this can be due to learned helplessness, which as I said is the belief that failure is inevitable. They can attribute this failure onto internal stable attributions such as ability. So the coach would need to um, do attribution retraining, which is the process of changing the attributions from internal stable to internal unstable, such as effort, which gives the performer personal responsibility to change um, their, um, their effort in order to improve success. Rugby can also cause aggression. Because the nature of the game is a contact game, which can sometimes um, lead to aggression. Um, also, frustration. So, for example, the ref makes a bad decision by calling a knock-on, which isn't, um, which you don't agree with, can also lead to aggression. It's mainly channeled aggression that is involved in rugby because that is an intent to harm within the rules of the game. Because obviously, you want to tackle the opposition. Um, being a sprinter. Um, in rugby, so on the wing and doing a lot of, of sprinting, there can be a buildup of lactic acid in the muscles. Um, and this is the point of obla, so that is the point of uh, the onset of blood lactate accumulation. In recovery, which is known as EPOC, the lactic acid system, which could take up to an hour after exercise, as it's the slow response, uses five to eight litres of blood in order to remove the lactic acid. Um, the lactic acid is either taken to the liver to be converted back into glycogen or it's removed as a waste product via urea and sweat. 